I want to read the scripture, first of all, that I have taken from Revelation chapter 21. Uh, this is very necessary and very, uh, very strong words of God. So here it is mentioned, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and ormongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All liars. All liars, yes. You know, nowadays, what we are hearing and what we are watching on the YouTube is only one thing that these are the heretics and uh, people, you know, coming against our precious prophet William Branham. Especially, uh, I, I want to highlight and target Mr. John Collins. Yesterday that he published one YouTube. In that YouTube, he is, uh, he, uh, <coughs> he is lying against William Branham. He is lying that he is saying William Branham is a, a, was an alcoholic. He was drinking and he was a homosexual. I don't want to utter those words from my mouth. Such a heinous, heinous allegations and accusations made against our prophet, which will never be forgiven. According to the Bible and even the Old Testament and wherever you see whole Bible, the lying spirit, the liars, God hate them. Liars. You see, if you if if the, if anything that William Branham uh, had done, literally he had done okay. That is no problem. I don't say, but nothing he has done. God, he he is a vessel of God. God used that man mightily. Devil don't want to see today because. God used the mightily, mighty ministry. William Branham swept all over the world. That ministry swept all over the world. The message and healing campaign and everything swept seven times around the world. So now we are hearing, now yesterday I saw that uh, he displayed uh, Lee Vale and uh, Baxter, brother Baxter, he was a Pentecostalist. Pentecostal uh, pastor and uh, one more uh, sister who was healed by that, uh, I am going to that Rosella Griffith Martin, her testimony, that also I am going to play in this YouTube. Yes, Rosella Griffith Martin. Yes, very great testimony she testified and uh, see that uh, John Collins calling our precious pr prophet William Branham is, uh, was an alcoholic and uh, drinking and uh, uh, have a, had a uh, homosexual context with the people. See what a, what a nasty and, and uh, very, very nasty and filthy man John Collins. Lying against our prophet's ministry. Imagine, this is not an ordinary thing, my dear brothers and sisters. We have to pray, pray day and night. Such a great, such a mighty message he brought. He turned our hearts back to the Bible, back to the apostolic doctrine. Because of Brother Branham, we had, we, we, we had seen the mighty ministry of God, the revealed world ministry. Everything we have seen. Because Brother Branham was sent to forum the coming word. He was sent to forum the coming word. Mighty ministry. I was not there. I was not born. But I heard and my, I am so much rejuvenated by the message and by the testimonies of William Branham's ministry. Yes, I heard it. I heard it. And this fellow picking up 
his uh, co-manager, his manager, his uh, brothers who helped brother Bra William Branham in the ministry, who went to, uh, around the world with William Branham, like Baxter and all these people. You know, whatever Baxter has done that uh, William Branham is not accountable, he, he is not responsible for that. It, uh, a, a, it, is, uh, a, a, it is a personal matter of uh, Brother Baxter and Brother Branham he, he is not guilty of anybody, any, anything might have done in that time. With that. The Brother Branham is not a guilty, he is a guilty man. Brother Branham is innocent, sincere. Those people associated with William Branham, that don't mean, that didn't mean that, that William Branham also indulged in the, those uh, things uh, and William Branham indulged in those uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, activities. No. William Branham had a clean and perfect and clean and uh, very great testimony among all the people. People were fearful to attend the William Branham's um, ministry. William Branham, even he had a new name. God revealed him the new name. I tell you today, William Branham went to the field, nobody was there, and the fire came and burned the crops. Yes. Yes. Oh yes, by the new name. By the new name. William Branham had even the new name. You may be surprised, even the new name William Branham had. Can God give the new name to the alcoholic person? Can God reveal the new name to the alcoholic and homosexual man? Nasty, dirty, filthy, the son of the devil, Mr. John Collins. How dare you are to publish such an YouTube publicly. You have to pay the price very soon. God will not going to leave you. The word of God fully declare that your portion is nowhere but the lake of fire because you have you are a liar against the ministry of William Branham. You have lied against the ministry. You are finished. You are finished. I tell you, it is thus saith the Lord. If my Lord is alive, if I defend my prophet William Branham, Elijah the prophet. If I believe and he trusts his message until my breath lasts on this earth, I tell you, God will never spare you people. Yes, this is too much. This is too much, but uh, your days are numbered. According to the word of God, your days are numbered. I trust in that God who punished that Nebuchadnezzar who said many, many tell you for sin. Yes, you are already, your days are numbered and you are buried and you will no more survive. This is too much. How dare you say that William Branham is and was an alcoholic? I remember what William Branham said. Even he was helping to his father and his father was an unsaved man. Brother Branham born in the unsaved family. The family was uh, uh, making liquors. Yes, his father was a uh, bootlegger and uh, Brother Branham was a seven years old boy and he was helping to his father to water the uh, fermentation of the liquor. He, he was helping out. He was not a drunker. He never drank. And uh, at that time, I still remember uh, audible voice came to William Branham and through the audible voice Lord spoke to William Branham don't drink don't smoke don't defile your body with a strange women William Branham was fearful trembling he never seen any man or shape of a man he never seen, only he heard the voice, he came and told to his mother and mother thought that he, this boy was a, since from the childhood, was a peculiar boy. He was having the strange experiences. So she did not give much heed to that uh, uh, things. But uh, that voice was ringing in his heart. That voice was ringing in Brother Branham's heart throughout his life. 
One time, that Branham family customs are that any guests come, any relatives come, they have they they had to have the drinks, whiskey, liquor. You know, Brother Branham, father gave Brother Branham to drink whiskey, liquor. Brother Branham, the same voice came again and cautioned the world to Brother Branham and same voice. Brother Branham trembled and the glass, that liquor glass dropped down. Brother Branham, father came and slapped on his face. Yes, such a great testimony of our prophet. He slapped on his face he, and he told you are the person to disgrace our family, Branham family. Disgrace. You are not drinking the liquor. This is the respectful in our family. Our family has a respect when, they, when he drinks the liquor. That is the respect to the family. But you are not that. You are disrespecting the Branham family. You know, Brother Branham was such a man. Then one time he had a old girlfriend traveling in the car. Brother Branham traveling in the car and that she that she she took the cigarette and start to smoke and she gave to Brother Branham. Again the same voice came. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't defile your body with the strange women. Brother Branham throwed out that cigarette. And you know what happened? She told him, you are a sissy man. Such a sissy you are. Brother Branham. In that old teenage time, Brother Branham had kept his powerful testimony. That testimony influenced today, we people, still his testimony influencing many people around the world. Therefore, I want to publish this YouTube to the whole world and to say this devil, Mr. John Collins, is not to be born on the earth. He is worse than Judas Iscariot. If Judas Iscariot was there and he betrayed the Lord after sitting under his ministry for three years, yes, and all the messages were preached for Judas and Judas never had any benefit of that messages. Rather, he betrayed our Lord for a 25 uh, silver, 25. Yes, for a piece of silver. Yes, for a piece of silver. He betrayed. Today, this fellow, for the piece of dollar, for a piece of gold, betraying our prophet's ministry. He sat under the ministry of William Brader. He says that he never understood because he is born unbeliever. He born seed of the serpent. He is the seed of the serpent was there under the message of William Branham. Seed of the serpent. Every seed has to bring forth of its own kind. So he brought forth of its own kind that this is a manifestation of the seed of the serpent. Yes, there is no doubt. How many, many things he pulled out from the message. Many things from the message. Every letter, every single letter, every single alphabet. This fellow pulled out and make it a big issue. And, you know, uh, uh, and uh, transforming the letters. Big words. Huh? Thinking that he's a great man. Great intellectual man. And historical research. Oh yes, sir. such a way this man doing today and, and, and choosing the associates of William Branham, those people who are denominational, uh, of course, of course they were not fully in the message. We with Levail was a theologian but yet Levail testified about William Branham very well. Reverend Baxter, 500 times I have seen the names of Reverend Baxter in William Branham's message. I don't want to pu pull out those quotations and uh, uh, publish. I don't want to do that. But briefly, I have the video cut. 
of Baxter says about William Branham, little while, but Baxter believed unknown tongues and uh, unknown tongues, and also because he was a Pentecostal Pentecostalist, and uh, he had to speak that way. And uh, uh, I don't know this fellow accusing him that he is a drunkard, whatsoever he, he, it is. All this 1906 experience of the Pentecostal people, they were alcoholics, they were humanizers, so many things. But they were joined with William Branham. That don't that that, that don't mean that William Branham is also uh, homosexual and drunkard and all those things. Don't brand him to those people. Don't put him into the category of those people. You know, beware of yourself. You are a rascal. Why oh, yes, you are a rascal man today. You have no other business. Yes, our uh, uh, our channel, my channel, especially my channel. Why oh, yes, sir? Carefully monitoring all your research and and we are going to expose you. After that, you have mentioned. Why Branham failed Indian trip? Yes, and nonsense. You are you are uh, you are uh, play published that YouTube. All those things are there. You are you are became a mad. You are a mad fellow. You are a, you are a mad fellow. You have no other business. Yes, but I tell you tonight, all these things you are doing. Yes, God is not. Uh, but the Bible says the God of Israel. Neither sleepeth nor slumbereth. He is looking on you. He is looking on you. And people know that. The people who, who went very deep in the message know you who you are. Whereas people like me went into the depth of the message and loved the Brother Branham's ministry and the message and the presence of the Lord. We know what William Branham is. Nobody told me what William Branham is. The Holy Spirit revealed to us what William Branham is. We, we, we stand for that prophet. We believe that prophet. Even we never left his, even his own son, Mr. Joseph Branham. Never left him because of his uh, uh, interpretations of his ministry and his heresies. Yes. We will never spare even his sons or his family or whoever it may be. Yes. So therefore, I want to tell you to the whole world, be careful. Be careful. Oh yes. Abolish the ban that channel. Ban it. That channel is not worth to hear, not worth to watch. You see his face. He is a face of the snake. The face of the snake, you see his face, John Collins face, you see, like a serpent beast face. Yes, poisonous face. Whole face is very poisonous, full of poison. Every word comes out from his mouth, he's a poison. He's definitely, he's a mama snake. Definitely, he's a mama snake at the Jordan, as Brother Branham said in the message of paradox. So, my precious brethren and sisters worldwide, I am going to play first. John Collins, you need to hear that. And I don't know, my blood is uh, boiling while I am hearing that and watching that video. Yes. And uh, after that, I am going to play Brother Branham's video that he says about uh, Lee Vail, and after that I play Baxter's little testimony then at last I play that uh, sister oh yes sir that sister Rosella Griffith Martin's video it is last there you can hear the testimony of that woman alcoholic woman doctor had given up her life Given up, doctor said, you no more live after six months. But how? She was a Methodist woman, Methodist woman. She attended William Branham's meetings in Indiana, Jeffersonville, USA. And how William Branham's ministry, oh yes, sir, delivered her from the alcoholic condition. You can directly hear the testimony and see how much liar is William Branham. Can an alcoholic man deliver the alcoholic? No. 
Devil cannot go against the kingdom of devil. That is what the Bible says. Satan cannot go against his own kingdom. So if Brother Branham was an alcoholic and homosexual, he could not, he could have not delivered the souls from the bondage and sickness and alcohol. So these are the items I am going to play one by one. First I play John Collins so that you must hear what the devil speaks about. Lies of the devil. Oh yes, and the secondly, bra uh, Brother Branham's uh, little short thing about the leeway, what he says about the leeway, little one. Then Baxter, then at last uh, Sister Rosella. All right. God bless you. While William Branham and other leaders in the post-World War II healing revivals took a strong position against drinking alcohol in their doctrinal teaching, the reality was quite different. Many leaders in the movement were drinking alcohol, and some of them were in William Branham's inner circle and were profiting from alcohol. William Branham's brother Howard drank alcohol and was the owner of a bar back home in Jeffersonville while he traveled with William Branham and Ern Baxter. Branham himself entered the ministry in Roy E. Davis's Pentecostal Baptist Church of God sect, and Davis publicly described his church as being full of drunkards on most Sundays. Davis and Branham partnered with former congressman and revivalist William D. Upshaw and Upshaw was the face of the alcoholic healing elixirs such as Sargon, even though Upshaw was the face of prohibition in the prohibition movement in the United States, and he ran for president under the short-lived prohibition party. A. A. Allen, who joined Branham's revivals, was often drunken and was caught driving under the influence. The Ku Klux Klan's supreme religious chaplain, who also held revivals with Branham and Davis, Reverend Caleb A. Ridley, was also caught driving under the influence of alcohol. The most interesting of all, however, is William Branham's partner in the revivals from 1947 to 1953, Ern Baxter. According to Branham's publicist, Reverend Lee Vale, Ern Baxter was a, quote, womanizer and drunkard. When Baxter and Branham traveled to India, after Branham prophesied that the world would hear of tens of thousands times ten thousands being saved in India, Baxter allegedly boarded the plane drunk and offended the people of India with his advances towards women. When Brother Branham went to India, he took with him some people. And I believe unknown to Brother Branham was one man, I'm not sure the duplicy got him there or Bern Baxter, and I'm going to speak very plainly, and I've said it before, and I'm not the least alarmed to say it because it's the truth. Baxter was a womanizer. He even got drunk on the plane and came off doing a goose step and everybody laughing at him. In India, he consorted women. They came to Brother Branham and said, Can the fa is it right for the father to have these women? Leo Mercer and Jean Goad. God told Brother Branham to hire them, two homosexuals. The India prophecy, Branham admitted, failed. You can learn this and more on william-branham.org. And if there's anything you lack of understanding, something that you do not understand, my associate, Brother Vail here, is available at all times. To explain anything that seems mysterious to you, ministering brother, or wherever you are, or any lay member, anything, if there's a question, if we ever preach anything or do anything that's not a promise of God in this Bible, you got a right to come to us and ask us like brethren. And we ask you to do that. We ask you as our brothers and sisters to come to us. We want to be servants of Christ. That's what we represent the world around. Well, I probably would say that, and I say this without prejudice, and I say it with a deep affection for William Branham. Um, I think that Brother Branham probably walked in all the lights that he had. Uh, he certainly was not what you and I would call a theologian, 
um, he was a man who had some rather strange views of the scripture. The one thing that kept me at his side was the fact that he he had a great love for the Lord Jesus, and I felt that any man who placed the Lordship of Christ where he placed it was a man that uh, I could associate with. But many of his uh, his other doctrinal views, we we controverted again and again. Uh, I think, uh, as in the latter rain, and as in Pentecost, and as in the charismatic dimension, and many people don't understand me when I say this because I have been in all of these things. Um, when a, when a, an evangelical or a non-charismatic criticizes Pentecostalism and the charismatic dimension and William Branham and so on, I say, whoa, now just a minute. I want to talk to you because I started speaking in tongues in 1932, and I've never been ashamed of that. I've never, I've never opted out of my, my charismatic dimension while I've been pursuing what I hope was sound doctrine. And uh, a man coming out of the evangelical realm criticizing the charismatic, to me, I'm going to take up for the charismatic. But then, having done that, I want to say to the charismatic, where's the word dimension? And one of my deep concerns that I, I've held almost all my life is that it's the word dimension that seems to get shortchanged in the charismatics. It's the spirit dimension that gets shortchanged in the evangelical realm. And my lifelong dream has been to see these two come together. I think when if the word and the spirit could come together in some kind of a permanent union, we'd, we'd blow the world into the kingdom of God. To start out um, my life, I was born in Stonington, Illinois, September 22nd, 1924, and it's mid-state Illinois. And um, I always, I had gone to Sunday school and church. My grandmother Griffith was a free Methodist, and I'd go to, to church with her. I went up to the altar a few times, uh, but my parents, neither one, were going to church. They uh, didn't feel that they had find enough clothes or things to go to church. And my, my mother raised me um, most generally. I think my daddy gave me one spanking in my life. My mother, it was her no's and yeses, and my clothes was all, my mind was made up. She'd make up my mind for me. And um, I went to Sunday school and church, sang in the youth choir, sang in the adult choir when I got in high school. And I went around with some minister's daughters, but they would try to teach me how to smoke. Um, and I kind of knew that that was wrong. But then in, um, after I graduated from high school, my folks moved to Joliet, Illinois. And um, I started working in an office and the girls would uh, go and have drinks. Well, my dad and mother neither one drank. And my daddy wouldn't have a, a drink with the president, he would tell me. He wouldn't go across the road to have a drink with the president. So it was hard for him to understand me. But I don't know if I was balking at authority or if I wanted to make up my own mind or if it were God's power to show what he can do I, I don't know. I don't know why it happened to me, although I, I know that um, he found a way where there was no way for me. When I moved to Joliet, I started working, and I started um, going out with the girls. They would have drinks, and naturally, I would be ahead of them in, in the drinking. Um, and I, even though I was ashamed of it, when they were gone to the washroom or something, I'd have an extra few drinks. Um, and I knew it was wrong, but I could forget 
and it was like I put on rose-colored glasses. It was just different. And finally, I got to the place. I only drank about two and a half years, but I had got to the bottom of my ladder. I couldn't have gone any farther. And if I were not in Jesus today, then I, I, I'm I, sure I could never uh, tell you. Because I got so I didn't have any appetite. I, uh, my weight had went down. I had no strength. I lost my job. My daddy would plead with me to, uh, he said, sis, help yourself. And my mother would be very dogmatic, but... I'd say, well, I just can't help me. There's no way that I can help me. And I resented the fact that I was held um, beyond my own wishes. I wanted uh, control or the reins in my own hand, and I didn't have it in my hands. I could feel myself slipping. And this is real. This is genuine. And no one that's never been there, they will never understand it. But I um, had been in a number of hospitals in Joliet, in Chicago, suburban. And one time there was five earthly doctors had walked away from my bed and said I would never live. And one doctor went so far, he said that uh, if I did live, that in six months my mind would snap. I would never make it. And my mother, just in all oh, a short time before this, had become a Christian. She was going to the Nazarene church. She was fasting and praying. and She worked um, at Hart Schaffner and Marks and would take her lunch hour and go and fast and pray and ask God to heal. My body help me. She didn't, we weren't taught healing, but she said, make her well, Lord. Um, she'd go in a little church basement and pray alone. And then she said, Lord, if you'll use her after she's saved. Well, then it was just a, oh, a little while after that that um, a Christian bus driver there in Joliet said, Rosella, tell your mother that there is a meeting in Hammond, Indiana, where a real man of God is preaching. He's praying for the sick. He's, um, uh, the lame walks, the blind sees, cancers are healed. Everything is done in Jesus' name. And I said, well, Joe, I never heard anything like that in my life. I went to the Methodist church. He said, Rosella, this is a person, and his name is Jesus. Well, I thought, all my life I went to church as a kid, but where was Jesus in it? I, I knew the scriptures. I knew the songs but I didn't know him. So then, after Joe had witnessed to us and told us about the meeting that Brother Branham was holding in Hammond, Indiana, uh, I tried the next day to get a hold of his wife, and he said three or four or five cars was going every day from Joliet, and we were welcome to go. So I called the second day, and they had left early to go to the afternoon meeting and the evening meeting. The third day I called Bernice and I asked her, I said, uh, are you going to Hammond, Indiana to the meeting? And she said, yes, did you want to go? And I said, oh my, we sure would. So we went over and she was telling me what all God had done for them. And I was so bored, I thought, oh land, I didn't feel comfortable because I didn't know him. I, so I thought, well, I'll just endure these people till I get over to the meeting. And um, we walked in and the meeting had already been in progress, the afternoon meeting, and those people were shouting. Um, there was such a shine on their face, that such a happiness that I never had in my whole life. And um, I thought, well, they're kind of noisy, but still in all, they, they've got to have something that I don't have. Well, I bowed my head that afternoon, and I didn't know healing was of God, but I asked God to make a way for me to... Um, if it was his will to heal me, for him to make a way. Well, that afternoon when the meeting was dismissed and um, Brother Billy Paul came by and uh, he asked me, did I need a prayer card? And I said, yes. And he asked me what was wrong. 
and I told them that I was an alcoholic. The doctors had given me up, and they said that there was no hope for me. And um, he wrote on the card. Well, we went out and had something to eat, and we came back to the meeting. Well, that afternoon, though, I said, I know in my heart I knew that it, when I stood before Brother Branham that I'd be all right. I knew it. There was just something. There's no way that you can explain it, but I knew that I'd be all right. But then right after that, something said, yes, Rosella, that's true. You could be healed and stand before this man. But looky. You walk up and every individual in this auditorium will know what's wrong with you. And that was a real shame that I had to face. But I thought, Lord, whatever it takes and you giving me grace, I'm going. We went back for the evening meeting then after we'd had lunch. And Brother Branham preached his message. Um, he preached, come see a man. I asked him later what it was and he said, come see a man was the message that he preached. And uh, he caught prayer card J25 to J50 after he had completed his message. And um, nobody had to take me up to there. I went on my own. No one had to show me where to go. I went by myself. And I said, I'm going, and I know that I'll be all right. And when it was, I was third in line, I had J27. And when I stood there waiting my turn, um, as I approached Brother Branham, I, I sensed a presence that was there that I can't define to you, but I know that was there. Um, and when I stepped before Brother Branham, he was the kindest man I had ever met, the kindest individual that I had ever seen in my life. And he said, do you believe me to be God's prophet? And I said, yes, sir. He said, um, if God reveals to me what's the matter with you, and if Jesus heals you, will you serve him the rest of your life? And I said, yes, sir. And he stepped back and he said, you're an alcoholic. He told the whole auditorium to bow their head and pray. And when he did, he laid his little hand on my head. And he asked the Lord to heal me in Jesus' name. What he cared for, so much that he told her the secrets of her heart and forgive every sin and put something in her that she run into the city saying, come see a man that's told me the things that I've done. See, that's what makes him great to me. He isn't a stuffed shirt. He was God's grace to the people. He was God's love expressed in human flesh. No matter how little or insignificant, he cared. Immoral, drunks, alcoholics, whatever it was. I think of little Rosella Griffin. In Chicago, her book's coming out now. There came into the meeting so vile to the, the great alcohol synonymous that turned her down and about six or eight famous hospitals of Chicago had wrote her name off the book never to come there even till she was so low until the only thing she had left was a coat that her mother gave her she cut it on the inside and put her bottles down in there such an alcoholic that she might not freeze to death laying in the gutters at night time a young woman smart educated miserable hang Sitting in the balcony up yonder in Indiana where we was having a meeting. No one seemed to care. If they knew who it was, they moved back from her. But Jesus cared. He moved me around and said, The woman sitting yonder, her name is Rosella Griffin. She's an alcoholic. She's been given up by the synonymous. And they can't do nothing for her. And she all hopes is gone. But she's believed on him. Thus saith the Lord from this hour on, no more alcohol. And now she's a sweet, loving Christian from place to place and from dive to dive, from jail to jail, preaching the gospel to save alcoholics. Jesus cares. So just cast your cares upon him. In your sorrow, he cares. 
You, when you lose your loved ones, he cares. He cares for the dead, those who've died in Christ. One day he was so weary in his way he could hardly go. But there come a, a band from the city, a funeral procession, and a little mother frantically throwing her hands in the air and wringing them. Oh, Jehovah, why did you take him? He's my only son. He was tired and weary, but he cared for that poor little heartbroken woman. Walked over to the, the carriers that, that carried the, the casket and touched it and said, Sunrise! Why, he cared. He understands. Now, we know by his life that he cares. Now, the question is for us tonight, 